Hey folks, today we are going to talk about emotional eating, which is something I have had a lot of requests on. We're going to figure out whether you are an emotional eater, some band-aids you can use to combat emotional eating, and what overcoming lifelong emotional eating food addiction will look like. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first part of this video is identifying whether you are an emotional eater. You probably know whether you are or are not, but just in case you're not sure, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you binge on food when you've had a bad day, or if you're sleepy, or if you're celebrating something, or if you're bored, or maybe if you're procrastinating? If you've been really good with your diet and you just want to let loose for a night, or a day, or a week? If you went over your calories or carbs a little bit and said, well, I'm just going to blow the rest of this day out and I'm going to eat whatever I want. Here are some other questions for you. Is mealtime the highlight of your day? Do you feel excited and ecstatic when it's time to eat? Are you sad when your meal is over? Hmm. Do you feel extreme disappointment when an aspect of your meal is not what you had hoped it would be? I have dealt with all of these emotional situations when it comes to food. And so if you've answered yes on any of these and they happen a lot that you've noticed in your life, then I hate to tell you, but you probably have emotional attachments to food. And if you're a food addict like I am, then that has caused problems for you either in being overweight or having trouble losing weight. So if you are an emotional eater and food addict, then here are some band-aids that I always promote that will kind of help you either lose weight or focus on not gaining any more weight. Now this part of the video, people might not understand and they might get a little angry, which I get, that's fine. But remember that these are band-aids and remember that the ultimate goal is to finally stop obsessing about food. So even though I promote a lot of these band-aids in my videos they actually are not the ultimate goal for what I want to live in my life and what I think normal people with healthy food relationships have to have in their life in order to lose weight or maintain weight so if you're the type of person who just binges hard when they're starving I would suggest the band-aid for you would be to try and have multiple small snacks or very small meals throughout the day so that you never reach that level of hunger where you will just eat everything in sight until you are stuffed and you have totally gotten rid of that hunger feeling. If you're a person who snacks all day and you don't realize how much you're snacking until you finally log or write down what you're eating all day, then I would suggest trying an eating window like intermittent fasting where you eat maybe one or two meals throughout the entire day and then that's it. Those are your eating windows and that's the only time that you eat. Intermittent fasting two or even one meal a day can definitely help you cut out overeating through grazing and snacking. And it also teaches you what real hunger might feel like if you wait until dinner time every day to eat, have a big meal, and then wait the next day. You'll actually feel that hunger and that kind of teaches you when you're craving something versus when you're actually hungry. If you binge at night, I give you two suggestions. First of all, brush your teeth. Um, if I'm feeling bingy at night, it's often just because I want a taste change and getting like a minty, you know, burst of freshness kind of helps with that but also if you binge at night and it's getting late it's like 9 or 10 or 11 go to bed <laughs> I think eating because you're sleepy and you're trying to stay awake or you're trying not to be bored because you're sleepy and nothing's really going on at night I think that's a big cause for a lot of nighttime binging so please go to bed <laughs> And I still struggle with this one too. I mean, I just, I'm a night owl. And now it's summertime and I don't really have to work so much because I'm a teacher. So it's just a little bit of a struggle right now. <laughs> if you just really crave that full stomach feeling and you are not satisfied until you hit that, that's an issue. But a band-aid for that is to find things that you can stuff your stomach with that will not derail your weight loss or weight maintenance. Basically what I'm saying is you need to eat a whole lot of vegetables. It's really hard to binge on vegetables. I mean, they are so fibrous and they will fill a stomach very quickly. So if you want to have some baby carrots ready to go in the fridge or some celery with a little bit of dip just to help the flavor a little bit, then do that. Or if you're craving something sweet, I always suggest sugar-free jello. Or if you want more variety in sweet treats, I would say to keep some zero calorie and zero carb drinks around. I used to really love me some diet root beer. That was, that was my jam. <laughs> Or you can do what I used to do and you can create your own Franken sweets. Basically, there was this point in time where I made what I called soil and it sounds gross. It's literally cocoa powder, like stevia and a little bit of water and you just mix it around until it's crumbly and you eat that just because you want something sweet and chocolatey. 
it's not great, <laughs> but it really hits a craving if you're having a bingey type night. Of course, you can try and distract yourself away from food. Yeah, look at your phone, go on Facebook, you know, watch TV, you know, hang out with your friends, whatever distracts you. I know that they say, you know, we spend way too much time in front of the TV and on our phone, but I'll tell you what, I personally think that that's a little bit healthier than binging all the time. So if you can distract yourself, that's a pretty good band-aid. And then the last band-aid that people are gonna flip out about when they hear it, okay? It's, it's not the perfect solution, but it definitely helps is measuring, logging, and tracking your food intake. Again, these are band-aids to help you lose weight or maintain weight until you get to the point where you can just naturally not binge on food. That is the whole goal, I think, when it comes to weight loss as a food addict is to get over obsessing about food. And yes, I have been tracking and logging and measuring all of my food intake for the past five years, all throughout my two years of weight loss and my three and a half years of maintenance. And I still obsess about food. I obsess about the amounts and I want to get to that place where I don't have to worry about that, where I can just listen to my body. So remember, these are band-aids. They are there to help you get to your goals or maintain your goals until you're ready for that next step of overcoming your emotional food addiction. Only when you overcome that emotional attachment to food are you actually going to eat and live like a normal person who doesn't have this attachment to food. Once you get over needing these band-aids, you are going to solve your food issues. And again, yeah, tracking, measuring, and logging all that food is, in my opinion, a band-aid until you get to that healthy state of mind with food. So I am a food addict with emotional attachments to food, and in my opinion, the only way to get to that natural state of being where food is not always on my mind, where I'm not obsessing about it, is I have to realize that I have to use food as fuel and that's it. I have to come to that realization and I feel like I'm so close. I started planning my skinny people habits um, video a while ago and so I was just kind of like taking in what I was seeing and observing and just trying to realize how normal people who have never been overweight view food. And the best summation that I can come up with is that it's fuel for when they're uncomfortably hungry. I have never done that before in my whole life and I'm just now trying to get to that point where I say my relationship with food is purely physical and not emotional. Like I said, I've been logging and tracking food for five and a half years and I'm finally ready emotionally and mentally to get to that state where I want to stop that and just have a normal relationship with food. So the only way that I believe that you will have that normal relationship with food where you see it as fuel is you have to recognize real hunger and real satisfaction. That doesn't mean that you, you know, just you have a craving or you feel like eating something or you're going to eat till you're stuffed and you know for sure you're full. No, I'm saying you have to come to a state where you are one with your body and you know when you're actually hungry and when you can stop eating. That's it. And that's something that we all struggle with those of us who are overweight or trying to lose weight or maintain weight. You have to read your body's physical signals and not the emotional ones. Of course, that's easier said than done, right? I mean, that's that's just, you know, <laughs> that's how the world works. So since I started planning that skinny video and realizing what people who have normal uh, relationships with food do, I've been trying to incorporate that more in my life. And that means that I've been listening to my body based on what it actually physically needs versus what I want for myself or what I want my body to need. So the first thing I do is I wait to eat at any part of the day until I physically feel that empty achiness in my stomach. So the first thing that I do when I feel that hunger feeling rumbling in my stomach is I stop and I flag. And yes, it did take me a long time to try and figure out an acronym for this. So I ask myself four questions. The first one is fluids. When's the last time that I drank anything? Hopefully water. I keep this baby with me all the time and I try and keep it filled throughout the day. It's just water with some drops of lemon juice in it and it's my favorite thing. Ah, me gusta. When you first have that hunger feeling, you need to see when the last time you drank something was. If it wasn't 10 minutes ago, drink some dang water or some unsweetened tea or some coffee or heck, even, you know, diet root beer if that's what you want. Try not to drink calories because I just believe that they are not as satisfying and, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> save your calories for food, things that you can chew. That's what I'm saying. 
Okay, once you've made sure that you are hydrated, you need to ask yourself, what would I like to eat? So yes, you should be eating foods that you enjoy. Just because you like a food doesn't mean that you have an emotional attachment to it. What food do I like? Well, right now I'm really liking my nuts. So I'm doing some roasted and salted macadamia nuts. If you want to snack on cold cuts or pepperoni slices or chicken breasts from the last day, then do that, whatever you want. But figure out what you would like to eat so that you do have that satisfaction with your food while you're eating it. That's another thing I learned from skinny people is they eat what they want, just in moderation. So eat what you want. Find out what you like or would like in that moment that you're hungry. The next flag question you should ask yourself is what amount of food will keep me satisfied for about the next three hours? Why three hours? Well, I feel like if you don't eat enough, if you just have a little tiny handful of something, you're gonna be hungry and be coming back all the time to the kitchen and that might cause you to overeat. But if you only eat enough to satisfy yourself for about three hours when you know meal time's gonna come up soon, then that will keep you from overeating. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> so for example, I've talked about this in my skinny people habits video, but I really want to get away from portions. So as a person who's been losing and maintaining weight for five and a half years, I'm so used to knowing that a serving of nuts is 28 grams. Well, I asked myself this question. What if I'm overeating? Because even though I'm only eating 28 grams, I would really be satisfied with less. So in the past few weeks, I have been experimenting with this and I've found that yes, I really just only want a handful of nuts and that has usually been coming out to 16 grams. So I'm saving like 100 calories or so. That is satisfying me and I can go another three hours until it's meal time. And then the last question you should ask yourself is, good? Are you good? Do you feel good about the decisions that you just made? Are you still hungry? Probably not if you had a nice little portion of a snack. You're probably good. One that would last you for three hours. Do you feel happy with the food that you ate? I hope that that's good. If not, adjust and try again next time. Just make sure that you're feeling good. Do you feel proud that you didn't overeat for a snack? Good. So again, with this stop and flag, check your fluids, find out what you would like to eat, Figure out an amount that will keep you satisfied for about three hours and then finally ask yourself, am I good? And hopefully the answer is yeah. So again, my belief is that when you overcome your emotional attachments to food and that food addiction, you will stop obsessing about food. Even if you're using those band-aids to help you lose or maintain weight and that they've been good for you. They've been good band-aids. They've helped you get to your goal or maintain your goal. Just because they're band-aids doesn't mean that they're bad. The process of losing weight is so complex. But I feel like the ultimate goal isn't really the weight loss, it's overcoming your food addiction and having a normal relationship with food. And then once you do have that relationship and you meet your goal, you will be able to stay at your goal. I just read a comment today on one of my videos where somebody said, you know, you've lost all that weight but you're still not satisfied. <laughs> And that's so true. And if you are in the process of losing weight, yes, maybe getting that body or to that goal weight on the scale is just the biggest motivator for you. But you'll find that it's impossible to always be satisfied. And so for me right now on this stage of my life, I just wanna grow and I just want to now finally get over obsessing about food. So all my videos I talk about skills and strategies and those are the band-aids that I'm talking about but they're gonna help you get to your goal and then hopefully the ultimate goal is to have a normal relationship with food. Well folks, that is about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. This has been such a journey. I'll tell you what, five and a half years of losing and maintaining weight and I'm finally getting to the point where I want to have a normal relationship with food. I wanna listen to my body's physical, you know, cries of hunger and satisfaction rather than the emotional cries of what I'm craving and that I need to feel really super duper stuffed in order to feel satisfied. And as always, I just share what I know, what my experiences have been, and what I'm experiencing now. So if you'd like to see more videos on weight loss and weight maintenance and keto dieting, please do not forget to like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I will link all of that down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye.